Hi guys, it's Jamila here from Slap. Today I'm going to be doing a video on the worst makeup products of 2022. It's about to get hair, it's about to get Larry. It's actually not. There weren't that many terrible products that I tried. I've got a few that were really bad, a few that were pretty bad, and then a few that were just a bit disappointing and I feel like weren't or definitely aren't worth your money and just wanted to put in here so you didn't end up buying any of them so i'm just going to get into it but if you haven't subscribed already guys please subscribe we'd love to have you in the slap family and without further ado guys here is the video not all of these products i still have a lot of the terrible things that i bought last year or this year i really didn't like them so much so that i brought them back if i could there are some that i've been lumbered with and there are some that i won't send back just because of like the nostalgia of the actual products themselves but when i could send them back i did so a few of them aren't going to be actually physically here but i will put photos up somewhere maybe here um of them so you can see it funnily enough the first thing that i would say it's one of the worst products of this year which i was very upset about was the dual dual forever glow foundation and this was released with new shades which were better for all skin tones deeper skin tones as well and i was really excited about this because they had yara shahidi in the campaign i really wanted to support because they were using like a model of a diverse background and they were increasing the shade range they were increasing the shade range for all skin tones and i really just wanted to support that campaign i really wanted to support that foundation i did have that dual forever foundation in the matte and i felt like i really regretted getting the matte because i just don't really wear like matte foundations very often for the second time around and get the glow version and get the new shades unfortunately this just was not nice i think the shade i picked was very very orange or yellow or something it was a terrible shade it didn't look good it felt it felt like it just sat on my skin it was quite heavy on my skin it looked heavy it didn't sink in it didn't look nice it didn't look natural it didn't look realistic it just was horrible um so i sent that back that was the first thing i got um that year that i sent or this year 2022 that i sent back and it felt good so i sent that back so i don't have it here but i'll pop a, bit, a picture of it up here so you can see it and avoid it at all costs Next up, it pains me to say it, but one of the worst products of this year, I'm so sorry, I love you, I love you, I love you, was the Pat McGrath Bridgerton number one. Number two was also pretty terrible, but number one was pretty bad. Actually, number two also deserves to be in here. Let's just say all of the Pat McGrath Bridgertons were pretty bad, apart from maybe the lipstick was okay, um, but all of these face palettes just were not a good vibe. The eyeshadow palettes were not good. I think the second one, the pink one, was much better, but I didn't get that because I'd already been burnt by this one. I did get the body shimmer, which I did give away. That is okay. It's just very glittery, and I think if you've got like the Tom Ford or the NARS, then you don't really need a glittery body shimmer like that but i did like the poof i like the poof they also released a cheek palette for that one and i got that that wasn't good either this one wasn't good this i love the packaging which is the reason why i kept it and because it's bridgerton i wanted to keep it but this was the cheek palette i should have known that this wasn't going to be right for my skin tone and i think if you have a lighter a lighter skin tone then you might actually really like this but it wasn't deep enough for my skin tone this was pretty much the only thing i could use and it's just a bit bright for me i don't really wear like baby pink blushes like that this one was too light i think it was like a highlighty blusher too light for me this was fine but a bit too light for me and i think because pat mcgrath has made some really great highlighters this just wasn't pat mcgrath vibes but i did like the packaging so i kept it also this eyeshadow palette it was fine my two main biggest beefs with it were the pans are like super small and there's all this space which I find very annoying. It's just like all this space can be filled with product and it should really be filled with product. Um, so I didn't love that about it. And the actual shadows themselves are good, but a few of them are redundant. Like these two are very similar. Um, these two are fairly similar. It just was a bit too pink and a bit too like boring. I do like the mirror though. It's very large and I should use it more because I've got it and I need to use it. But it was quite a disappointing product from Pat McGrath. I do like the fact that it was a Bridgerton collaboration with her, but I, I would have preferred from her to have better of less rather than lots of stuff that's just not really... It's just kind of a redundant collaboration. I feel like that's the problem with a lot of these collaborations. Um, they've got big budgets, I'm sure, to be able to do collaborations with Netflix and Star Wars. A lot of the time, these collaborations are just churned out and they don't really do justice to either, either side, either the makeup artist or the actual brand. I feel like the packaging did do justice but i think the actual products themselves weren't really good enough and i think it could have been really interesting and really looked at like the regency era and maybe like some of the styles of the makeup then and trying to elevate them or something just interesting that was actually done really really well where the quality was really really good so it was just like uh, epic 
but it just wasn't so it wasn't epic um so yeah sorry pat i love you very much but this was not good another product which i didn't actually send back but i did chuck away when i moved house was the kvd good apple concealer i had a lot of comments on this i think i was trying to be really nice about it and be like it's not that terrible everyone's like you look gray <laughs> you look ill what have you done to your face um and it was that concealer and i don't know if it was just the shade but it was pretty bad i never used it again i looked horrific i literally looked like i'd aged a hundred thousand years and i also got like the flu as well it was just not it was not a good look not a good concealer and because the good apple foundation was so popular so hyped and i was like i missed that whole wave i really wanted to like get the good apple concealer and then it was terrible um so it's like i'm never buying anything kvd again although the kvd blusher is really good so maybe i will kvd liquid blusher which i do have on today with the gucci because i feel like i don't use that gucci blusher enough so next up is the ah. Oh, now this product, I never thought I'd say it, but after I'd lost it, after I had to send it back because it was faulty, the lid was faulty, I didn't want to repurchase it, which told me everything I needed to know. And actually, if you watch my initial review, I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread, which is quite ironic and quite embarrassing. It is the Say Air Set Setting Powder. I got this in the kind of golden dark shade and the very rich shade and i've still got the rich one translucent deep i also bought it in medium deep i think it was i really like that medium deep shade i thought it was sorry the light keeps changing i thought it was absolutely stunning i thought it was gorgeous it did a really good job of like brightening my face setting me down it was just really nice and then i kept realizing that i looked kind of white like i had a very intense white undertone to me and it just was like peeking through all the time and then i sent it back because the lid wasn't opening and i just didn't buy another one and after i tried the nars one i realized that that was the say one was really not my undertone and that i'd made a horrible mistake and i told everyone it was really good and it wasn't so i think if you have a fair skin tone or a light undertone like if you have a cool undertone or very fast skin tone i think it's still a good powder because the powder itself is beautiful but the undertone on my skin tone anyone who has like a golden deep skin tone it's just not a good look so my apologies for saying it was good it's not bad it's just bad if you are my skin tone another powder i bought around that time which i also thought was one of the best things since sliced bread was the givenchy prisme libra press powder in purpoline mimosa it is orange it is cool it is great if you've got a deeper skin tone and you want something brightening color correcting awesome and everyone talks so much about the translucent powder of this and because i hadn't got on that you know wavelength or bandwagon early enough to do like a review that was new i wanted to do a review on the new version of that which was the pressed powder version but unfortunately i don't think this is as good as the loose powder because for one simple reason it hard pans all the time like i love the fact it has a little brush with it the brush is very good the actual powder itself is nice in the sense that the color story is really good it works really well on my skin tone it's flattering it's soft it's nice but it's impossible to use because every time i touch it with a brush or the brush it just hard pans and it's just got this horrible film on it it looks dirty it looks gross it's not it's just my makeup and it's just hard pans every time so unfortunately this is not fit for purpose but i love it it's really pretty and i like carrying it around but every time i carry it around and try and use it it doesn't really do anything so it kind of becomes like a redundant defunct product so next up is a product that's not bad but it just has a few issues with it and it is the rare beauty tinted moisturizer i actually wore this the other day and i really really liked it but it reminded me of what it does wrong which is something quite bad it really c creates and then accentuates texture like i didn't have any texture on my face here and then i put this on and suddenly i'm like literally like bobbly and like really uneven my skin suddenly feels very raised so i don't know if i'm having like an allergic reaction to it now i'm saying it out loud it does sound like i'm having an allergic reaction to it and since then my skin has been really like textured here it's only just now kind of starting to calm down so maybe i'm actually allergic to it but the rest of my face really likes it it gives me a really nice glow it's a really good skin match what shade is this this is the shade 48w i really like it it's gorgeous but it does create texture and then it highlights texture and that's just not just not a good thing next up is a product i did talk about in the review that it wasn't really that great it is the nut charlotte tilbury quick and easy makeup trio kit that you can build and swap and change as i mentioned in the video it was terrible in the sense that all of the products don't have lids i think the one i tried i can't remember what color it was 
Um, it was nice. It was very soft on me. I sent it back because I just thought it was a bit stupid that I couldn't use the products without the kit because I couldn't put a lid on them and I couldn't buy anything else to put in them because then the ones I took out would dry out and it just felt really annoying and stupid. It wasn't that cheap and the amount of product wasn't that huge considering the price. It just all felt like it wasn't really well thought out and the kit was quite fat and quite chunky and just kind of like awkward next up another product which i do think i have actually i think it's just in my kit somewhere and i couldn't find it is another say product this is the say hydro beam concealer it was good i liked it but it had the same issue so i like the concealer i like the brightness of it i liked what it did i like the longevity of it it was a good concealer but once again it had that very pearlescent white highlight to it or white glow or white illumination to it that really just gave me like an ashiness and i think when you're a deeper skin tone especially if you're a golden undertone or warm or neutral undertone you need things that are warm on your skin not things that are white and cool on your skin because it just makes you look ashy it just makes things look off kilter and it's not flattering for your skin tone it's not formulated with your skin tone in mind and that's what i find is a problem with this whole hydro beam collection from say it's a really nice concealer but unless you're a very fair skin tone or have a cool a whiter lighter undertone it's just not gonna work for you. So I think that is a problem. I think Say need to go back into development when they think about deeper skin tones, because I think it's fantastic that they do create products for deeper skin tones, but those products that they create for, your, for deeper skin tones actually have to work for deeper skin tones. Otherwise, the deeper skin tones won't buy them or they'll send them back and then they'll feel like there's not a demand for them, even though there is, it's just they're not quite right. So I think there's so much to love about Say. I really like the things they brought out last year, but they just, slightly miss the mark in terms of the undertone of those products i think it's really important that they just have that message another product that wasn't that great i did say this at the time the jones road miracle balm this is very hyped people think it's amazing they think it's so good if you want no makeup makeup it's the best thing i find it very not good i find it bad um it's not it actually is bad and i feel like i keep trying to make it nice because maybe it's bobby brown i don't want to upset bobby brown or i don't want to disrespect bobby brown because she's a genius and she created bobby brown but this is not a good product especially in this shade i have this in the shade sun kissed in its head in my head it's great it's deep it's bronzy it's glowy the fact that you have to push your thumb in to make it work or to activate it tells me that this was already a, a wrong product they decided to just keep it going let's recheck change the way you have to work with it you have to shove your thumb in it to make it work let's tell people that's cool and you're breaking the seal no <laughs> you're not that's just terrible the fact that i have to do that that's a red flag when i actually put it on it's very greasy it's very very sheer it's not that buildable the more i build it i don't get more pigment i just get more shine and if you are like a kind of namvo glow glowy dumpling kind of girl then maybe that's a cool vibe but if you're already fairly shiny and your skin doesn't want to be completely super shiny and you don't and you actually want some pigmentation in your product as well as just glow then i think this is just a bit of a miss i haven't tried any other shades i'm sure there are some good ones but the fact that i have to shove my thumb in it just to get it to wake up and start just to me is just not great next up is a product that was so bad i literally sent it back immediately after i bought it it was the laura mercier light revealer tinted moisturizer in 6n1 mocha it was terrible i did actually get shade matched in on the counter and they said it was actually the perfect match for me i got home and i literally looked like a tomato you can watch the video and see for yourself it was a hot mess i looked so red it was so so red it was like no one is this red like whoever you've bought made this for they don't exist like why are you doing this the, the shade range was very bad at the deeper end of the spectrum. There was not a lot of choice. And the one I picked, or the one I was told to pick by Laura Mercier, I was like glowing red. It was like, it was really, really bad. A product that wasn't that bad, but a product I just wanted you guys to know that I did send back was Anastasia Beverly Hills Nouveau Palette. It was nice, but I just felt like there wasn't enough variation in the palette to actually create a lot of different looks. And it wasn't that cheap. I like the khakiness of the actual palette itself, and I like the khaki ones in it. And I like the look I created but it just felt very close to the edge of like too light for me for the most part of the palette and it just didn't feel like good enough use of my money at, especially when there are Anastasia palettes that are so good like the soft glam it just felt like it wasn't quite there yet so I sent that back but it wasn't terrible and I think if you are a lighter fairer skin tone or a tan skin tone you might really like it but for my skin tone and I think anyone deeper it's just a bit too 
on the cusp of being a bit too light. Next up, a product I did not expect because a brand I love, the Rose Ink Solar Infusion Cream Bronzer. That was not a good bronzer for me. It was just the wrong undertone. All of the shades on the deeper end of the spectrum were just the wrong undertone. It kind of reminded me of that Charlotte Tilbury when it first launched in the sense it just felt very contoury, um, but it just wasn't flattering in any stretch. And I tried two shades um, and neither of them were very flattering on me. So I just decided they weren't the ones for me. But it just wasn't a very well thought out skin range. Um, which was a shame because I thought Rose, Rosie would smash it because her blusher is so good. Now, a product that has got a lot of flack since I reviewed it. I still love it, but I know why it's in these, you know, people don't think it's a good. The NARS Power Matte Lipstick. I got this in the shade American Woman and No Angel. Both of these two are two of my favorite lipsticks because of the shades. They're such good shades. I have my lip liner on and I just dab a little bit of them. If I've got a warm look on like today, I put a bit of this one on, which I did just in the middle. And if I've got like a cool tone on, I, I put a bit of the American Woman on just in the middle and it's awesome. Wearing these all over your lips is very drying. That is a very, very drying lipstick. But I like the I like the packaging. I like how it feels. I like that they're all different colours. I think it's really nicely done. It's just too drying. But the way I wear my lipsticks a lot of the time is just to use lip liner and then just a little bit in the middle. So for that, for that, it's fine. But yeah, admittedly, if you if you do want a lipstick to just wear all over your lips, like they're gonna be pretty parched. But they do last a very long time, but they're gonna be very dry. But I still love it. So I am putting it in the worst because technically it's not that good for hydration. But I still love the shades and I still love this lipstick. So I'm just, yeah, I'll leave it there. Next up, a product that I've talked about enough about it not being that great. And it's not the worst product ever, but it's not that great. The Chanel Tweed in the shade uh, Tweed Fauve. Like I always say, there was another one that I wish I could have got, but it was sold out. That one was nice, but this one is nice. It's got a good color story. Great color story, terrible pickup, a bit boring, a bit soft, a bit kind of blah. I have to use my fingers to actually get any pickup, which is a reason enough that it's not very good, especially for a matte um, powder eyeshadow. Like for a shimmer, I get it. You want it to be like glazy, but for a matte to have to pick it up with your fingers is pretty crazy. So for that reason, it is one of the worst products of the year. And the pouch, I'd like it to be reusable. And it was quite pricey and I just didn't feel like it was worth the money. And I'm not sure any eyeshadows from Chanel really are. And I haven't found one yet that I really think is worth the cash. So maybe next year there'll be one. Next up is a product that wasn't really the worst. And I did actually, I was fairly nice about it in my review. Um, because I hadn't had an eyeshadow palette from NARS for a long time and it's not bad um, But I haven't used it and I think that says so much like there were some really nice shades in here But I think when there are so many more interesting eyeshadow palettes around um, And different formulations and different finishes and textures Elevation I feel like this hasn't really moved the needle much I don't feel like the needle's been moved with NARS eyeshadows yet and I'm, I'm intrigued I'm hoping that next year they really like pull up with their eyeshadows because their rest of the stuff that they released this year 2022 was fantastic the brush the blush duo the body shimmer oil uh the foundation the powder everything they did was so amazing this just was the least exciting i was also really excited to try the blush palette as well but as soon as i saw that in real life it was like that's not really going to work for my skin tone and the pictures looked made it look a lot deeper and you know more richer skin tone friendly than it actually was and i just think this holiday collection didn't really hit the packaging is probably the coolest thing about it and that's not really good enough it's fine and i i was really happy to have the reds because i really needed some good maroons but i just feel like the actual shimmers could be a bit more interesting in their formulation in their texture and um, and they just could just be a bit nicer and more innovative and modern and i just don't feel like it's done that so it's not one of the worst products by any stretch it's fine it's just not like that great and last finishing off with a product i literally tried last week or this week or last week the rare beauty highlighter in the shade flaunt like i said in my video i really like the packaging and i know a few of you guys said it was a bit cheap which is fair it is a bit cheap but i just like it i think it's cute i think it looks good in the actual palette itself but the more i think about it and i have tried it again this is not a good highlighter it's very sparkly it's very glittery it looks way too cool like in here it looks like a bronzy dream of amazingness 
but in reality on my skin tone it looks quite cool it looks quite white it looks very patchy it doesn't layer up very well it looks very glittery it just is not a good highlighter it looks so much better it looks so much better than it is which is what makes it hurt even more because it's it's not good fine not every product is good but it looks so good which is just rubbing salt in the wound the fact that it is it looks amazing but it's not very good so i'm actually going to bring this back i wanted to let you know that i am returning this because i'm never going to use it again and it's not very good and there are so many great highlighters that have been released i just don't need this in my life even though i do like the packaging even though you guys don't like the packaging i do still like it but i don't think the product is good so i'm going to be returning this unfortunately just bought it but um rounding off 2022 uh the worst products of 2022 with the last product i tried of 2022 pretty much so that is it guys let me know your thoughts and comments down below thank you for watching all of my videos this year thank you for bearing with me when i haven't been feeling well i really appreciate it i really appreciate your support anyway guys thank you so much for watching i hope you like this video if you haven't subscribed already guys please subscribe we'd love to have you in the slap family thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you on the next one